Good morning and welcome back to COVID Computer Camp. Really excited to finish off Donkey Kong today. This is our first four part lesson. There's been a lot to it. We had a couple of stumbling blocks along the way, but we're ready to go here. So just a few more things to finish up and then we will have a brand new spanking finished game. So um, let's do that right now. All right, so let's go over to our game screen. Um, we're gonna start off on Donkey Kong himself. I was chatting to with some of my uh, production assistants over on Discord yesterday after the session. And they were saying that the game is too easy right now because you can start playing at the beginning. Let me show you. And if you speed run it, let me show you. It's, so there's a five second delay, but then if you start moving right away, you can start moving while he starts throwing barrels and you can be pretty much up to the top of the screen before he even has the chance to get throw very many barrels down on you, which is a bit of a cheat. And since we don't have multiple levels in the game, that really does cut into the amount of fun if you can finish the game in the first 10 seconds. So before we do anything else, I thought I'd address the concerns of my friends on Discord and see if we can get this guy to um, to start dropping barrels a little earlier and have a and uh, just make things happen a little bit faster here, just so we can ramp up the difficulty level. So I'm looking at the Donkey Kong code, the the gorilla code. There's a couple of things we can do here. First of all, there's a throw a uh, wait one second, throw barrel down at the bottom here, and then wait one second again. We don't need both of those. We might not even need one of them. Let's have a look at what it looks like without any delay in it at all. There, so we'll go throw barrel down. And then immediately start throwing. And the okay, and so that's better. He's also he's waiting two seconds before he does anything here. We want the same thing. We want him to pause two seconds, pick up a barrel, wait. But he doesn't have to wait at the beginning. We can take this wait and move it to the end. I'm gonna try that out right now. I'm gonna pull these guys loose. I'm gonna pull my wait two seconds. I'm going to pop that back in there again. So now it's in the same order. It's just going to go from two seconds and loop around that way. And what will happen is you should throw the first barrel a little bit, quite a bit faster. So let's try that again now and see what that looks like. Oh, but he, um, he threw the first barrel before he really got a chance to do anything. I'm going to try putting that wait one second back in before he throws the barrel down. It doesn't look like he's throwing it. He needs to wear that costume to be throwing it down. So I think this is looking much better now, but just before we throw the barrel down, let's make sure he's wearing the proper costume. So we're gonna go switch, switch costume to throw. And let's try that one more time. Mr. T? Yes. Um, you're not streaming on Discord. I'm not streaming on Discord. Am I, are you guys looking at the wrong screen? No, no, All right. you suspended. Yeah, I'm suspended, eh? Um, I've maxed everything out here. Let me just cancel the live stream and restart it again here. Is that looking better now, guys? Yeah, now I see. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that yep. was about. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Can't see it. We I can see it. It should I be changed. working now. Mr. T? Yes? I changed the wait two seconds at the end to wait 0 0.5 seconds, and it made the game much, like, faster and easier. Yeah, but then he's throwing down tons of barrels, isn't he? But in the real game, they, the barrels go, like, very fast. I've they seen. move fast, but they don't spawn fast. There's only, like, three or four barrels at a time on the screen, I think. Um, anyway, guys, you, um, the speed of the barrels and um, the pause time, they're all something you can customize. Everyone's going to make their own slightly different version of the game. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, anyway, so are we looking better now? I, I, uh, I got a little distracted there. Let me try one more time. So this is the kind of tweaking and testing that we do before we put a game out. So he is uh, throwing that barrel down before he actually gets into the costume, eh? which doesn't seem to make sense. So there's his costume. And then he goes throw barrel down. Oh, and then he switches his costume back again. 
All right, so I really don't need to change this costume to throw here because he's doing it in here already. So why is this timing off? Let's see what's happening here. So he, yeah, he tosses the first barrel down. And, huh. All right, I'm going to have a look at that during the break. It's not that big a deal. Maybe um, some of my pals can help me figure this out in a couple of minutes. Uh, but let's get to coding, guys, because everyone's kind of waiting around here. So, um, all right, we're, let's go back to our Mario Collider. So almost everything is done on our Mario Collider, which is the invisible object that detects hits. From uh, from barrels, etc. But the only thing that's not happening, you guys have seen as you've been playing the game, is we don't actually die. We can't collide with anything. So since this guy is the collider, let's just process uh, a collision here. Um, so we're going to need a new green flag. Let's go back and start coding this with a green flag. And this is just going to be the code for what happens if he's touching something dangerous. We're dangerous being barrels and the, um, the oil monster, and the oil barrel, and Donkey Kong himself, of course. If you're ever dumb enough to run across the screen and touch Donkey Kong, we're going to have to make that kill you as well, of course. So green flag, let's grab a forever and put it underneath here. We're just going to start checking to see if we're touching any of these guys. So I need an if statement. We'll go to our control blocks, and it's not an if else, just checking for Peter. All right. Uh, now I need a whole bunch of or statements. I'm gonna, I've got four different things we could be touching here. So I'm going to grab, go to my operators, grab an or statement, and put one or statement into another one, into another one. And now we've got four different options here, right? So we're going to say touching. So let's go to our census and figure out what we're touching. So we need touching Donkey Kong. I'll do it from this side out because it's going to grow. Touching Donkey Kong. We also need touching oil. We also need touching barrel. And lastly, we need touching fireball. There we go. That's all the dangerous stuff in the game. And if any of those guys get touched, of course, we're going to die. So. Um, you you die and triggers a whole bunch of things all simultaneously. We, we need the barrels to disappear because when we restart our next level, we don't want the old barrels to hit you the second you respawn. So we're going to get Donkey Kong to start to throw new barrels, which means we have to delete the new ones. To do that, because we're um, we're talking to multiple sprites at once, we're going to have to do a broadcast. So let's broadcast a message that says dead. So let's go to our events. We'll broadcast a message right inside this if statement that says dead. And that's already been prepared for you. I think that should be ready to go. Now we have a sound effect in here that's called death. And it sounds like this. Anyone who's ever played the arcade game will be familiar with that. So we're going to go play sound. Uh, we're going to play sound till done because we want to actually delay the, the play of the game until the music is done here. So let's go play sound death until done. And then we're going to change our lives. Actually, I think we should change our lives before we play the sound so that we're not waiting till the end of the sound to know that our lives are down by one. So we're going to go change right above the, the sound file here. Change. Um, I just drew a blank there. Uh, change lives by minus one. Yes, of course. Lives by minus one. There we go. Uh, we also want to send Mario, once the music is done, we want to send Mario back to his starting position. So um, let's tell him to go back to, or this collider to go back to its start position, which it's already at its start position, so we shouldn't have to change any numbers here. Um, I'm just going to, um, so th this number here is minus 174x and y is minus 163, and that will get him right back to the position where he is on the screen right now, which is right here. Um, we're just going to wait one more second for everything else to finish happening, because there's some stuff happening elsewhere as well. And then we're just going to restart the level again. So we're going to do a broadcast. Let's go to our events. We'll broadcast that level start command, which will get 
the next uh, row of um, of barrels to start come barreling down towards us. Okay. Um, a couple of other things. We need a winning condition here. So we're going to do another if statement still inside the forever. And we're just going to say if I'm touching Pauline, Pauline is our heroine. We haven't programmed her yet. We're going to do that next, I think. So we're going to go touching. If we're touching Pauline, we're going to win the game. So we're going to broadcast a message here that says win. There we go. That part's good. Um, so the, the rest of the win events and all the other stuff are going to happen inside of other sprites. We're just broadcasting the message right now. We're going to do the same thing if the game ends as well. So um, I don't think I've done anything fancy today for game over or any or um, or game win. It's going to be up to you guys who are remixing this at home to add a nice end screen, add extra levels, add any of this stuff. Right now, this is a fairly stripped down game. We just have three lives, three chances to get to the top and save Paul Dean. And if you get there once, you win and the game's over. So if you want more content, there's lots of opportunities for here, here for you to put your own stamp on the game. You know, also, of course, that you can design any of your own levels here, right? This is all keyed into the colors and the backdrops. So if you just grab one of these girder things inside Photoshop or, um, or Pixlr, which I showed you last week, then um, you'll be able to redesign your own levels. I um, think I might do a Pixlr lesson at some point on how to take a picture like this and modify it and create new levels with it. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. I think that might actually be worth a little Pixlr lesson. Okay, where were we? Sorry, we were back on the collider. And we've got a second if, a, a third if statement here that's just for the game over condition. So we need to say if lives are equal to zero. So let's go to our operators. We'll grab an equal sign and we'll go to our variables. We'll grab a bubble that says lives. If lives are equal to zero, then we're going to broadcast another message that says game over. So let's go to our events. We'll broadcast game over. There's no game over in there yet. Okay, I'll just do a new one called game over. I, for those of you who are lost, I of course just typed on new message here and that let me uh, define a new broadcast name. Okay, so that's it for this. We should be able to die now when we hit stuff. We don't have a death animation yet. We've got to do that inside Mario. So, uh, but let's just give this a test and see if it's all working properly right now. So I'll max my screen out. So I'm frozen here for five seconds. Uh, just a second, Abby. I just want to test this out. Okay, so um, just a second with that, Abby. All right, so there's my confirmation that the death is working. There's no animation. All right, I'm back. So um, we tested our game out. We're dying quite nicely, which is great, but there's no animation, which um, makes me a little bit sad. So let's get right on to that. We're going to program Mario. So remember, we had the collider dealing with all the physics and the jumping and the, and the ladder climbing, and Mario is just kind of a slave following the collider around. But um, the Mario code we've done so far all has to do with what Mario looks like. Is he Which animation is he wearing at any given time? And we need one last animation to add here that um, that makes him die. Let me show you. So uh, I had a look at the original Donkey Kong game, and this is definitely what happens when he dies. He does a little spin around. He changes between different costumes. And then he ends up lying on the ground with a little angel halo over his head. So that's what we're going to do. If we Let's go have a look right now. <laughs> So we're going to go over to Mario, and um, let me show you the costumes that are already set up for him. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff, and towards the end here, we've just got a die one, die two, which is him spinning, die three, which makes him spin again, and then die four. The question you might ask is, why don't we just spin him around using rotation commands instead of doing a new command for every time? The problem with spinning him that way is he'll lose his 
center. If we try to spin him, he'll no longer uh, be aligned properly with the collider. We want him to be frozen on top of the spot where the collider is. Uh, otherwise, if we spun him around, he would actually spin around and his head would go through the girders, right? We want him to spin above the collider, um, above the area, above the girders. So if he spins on his current axis, he'll end up spinning through solid stuff, which is no good. So the easy way to cheat and do that was to create four different costumes. And that was actually the way that the original Donkey Kong um, developers did this as well. And oh, I forgot to show you the last costume, which is guy five here, and that is him with his little halo, halo oh, sorry, his angel halo. Hard to see here. Let me zoom in so you can get a better look. There we go. Okay, so all we have to do is when we get that death event, we have to uh, just have him spin through this a little bit. So let's go to our events. We'll say when I receive a message that's called dead, we're going to stop the other scripts in the sprite. We don't want him moving around at all. So let's go to the very bottom of our control blocks, the fourth from the bottom here. It says stop all. I'm just going to change that to stop other scripts in the sprite. So that will stop um, all of the um, other animations and stuff like that working and make sure that none of them try to superimpose themselves over what we're doing with the death animation here. Uh, now we're going to switch our costume. So let's go to our looks menu. We'll grab a command here that says switch costume. It's right up here. And we'll go switch costume to die one. Now we just we have all our costumes all lined up one after the other here, so we just have to do a bunch of next costumes here. So we have four more costumes, which means we need four costume changes. So let's grab a repeat block here. We'll go to control, grab a block here that says repeat ten times, drop it in and change that to repeat four times. All right. Now what we want to do is have a little pause here. If we change our costumes too quickly, it won't be noticeable to our audience. It'll happen too fast. So we're going to go grab a wait one second command. It will change to 0 0.2 seconds, which seems to be my favorite delay time for animation. And then right after that, we'll go next costume. And that's beautiful. And the um, the starting of the next round of, uh, of game has already happened over on the collider. So what, we don't need to do that. Let's just max the screen out here and give it a little test. It's not going to take much for us to die here. I'll just stand here at the bottom and wait for the first barrel to come down on my head. Well, you know what? That's taking too long, so let's go up and meet it. I will meet my death bravely. Here we go. Okay, let's have this guy crush us. No! There we go. So there's our nice little death animation. Let's see if everything restarts itself. Yep, yeah, we're back down at the bottom here. We just... Oh, it didn't get rid of the barrels, though. Whoa! And all, all our barrels started flying. Part, yeah, well, I think the first thing we should do is go back to Kong here and tell him when he received the message, a dead message. So when I received dead, let's have him stop all, or no, stop uh, scripts in the sprite. And that will stop him from doing other stuff from throwing down new barrels until he gets the new level start command. I just want to test that out and see if that solves our problem here, guys. Just a second. Yeah, my barrels have disappeared. I die. I respawn. And he throws his first barrel down. Oh, we're good. Okay, so that was all it took then, guys. You see how um, sometimes it's not too difficult to, to troubleshoot this stuff. You just got to zero in on the part of the program that is giving us trouble. In this case, it was Kong that was misbehaving. He kept throwing barrels down. But a weird little glitch, eh? You can see how sometimes unintended stuff happens um, if the wrong part of the program gets invoked at the wrong time. So thank you to Chris and Peter, who did a fantastic job helping me figure that out. All right, um, I think we should just keep moving here, guys. So I've just saved my game file in case anyone wants to catch up. We're at a natural stopping point here. But I'm going to plug through and um, start coding Pauline here, and then we'll keep moving. All right, so let's switch over to Pauline. Her code isn't very difficult at all. All we wanted to do is sit there and kind of move around a little bit. She's a typical movie heroine, doesn't have a lot to do with 
pass the dash tell test. Maya is probably the only one who gets that joke. Do you get the joke, Maya? She's not. I listening. don't think I caught it fully. <laughs> the best tell test. Do you know what that is? Have you heard um, of I feel like I have, but I can't tell. I it's, can't remember what it it's was. It's part of feminist theory. It's the idea that um, women don't usually have important parts in movies. And the way that you can tell if a woman has an important part is if two women are talking to each other about something that doesn't have to do with a man at any point in the movie, right? And so all our poor heroine does right now is sit there and say, help, help, calling to Mario. So she doesn't pass the test. This is not a good feminist game is my point, I guess. Anyway, that's a, just a silly little thing. Um, okay, so let's get on to Pauline here. So we need a green flag here. When green flag clicked, let's blow this up for you guys. Now we need her to go to her start position. Fortunately, she's already in her start position, so we don't have to input that number. I'm just going to drag this in. She's an X of 1 and a Y of 161. She has a standing around costume. Let's look at her costumes right now. She's got a standing around costume. She's got a forward hop. And if we navigate between these two, it'll look like she's impatient. We've got a third one here that says help. And that is kind of the other footstep in this thing. So she's going to basically stand there and then go back and forth screaming help. And when she eventually gets rescued, she's going to show a little heart here, which will be her signal that we've won the game. All right, let's go to uh, switch costume. We'll go to our looks menu. Switch costume to stand. And then now we need uh, her to basically keep going through costumes until the game is over. So let's go grab a repeat until, which is under control. And this one here, it says repeat until. So we're going to repeat until um, Mario action. I think my code here might be wrong because I don't have a variable called Mario. Oh, I do. This might be something that, no. Uh, who? Okay, so I had an event there for our death, but this is actually a variable called Mario Action. That's going to be a bit of a problem if we want to do repeat until, or we can, um, yeah, I do want to do this repeat until, so I think there's a little bit of code that I haven't done properly in here, guys. Let's keep working on Pauline here, and we'll finish up the, um, the other stuff as well. So we do have a variable in here called Mario action. It has to be equal to win. Um, so we're going to set that variable a little bit later. We're just going to go into our winning collision uh, conditions in the collider, I think. But for now, let's just keep programming her because we're not in danger of winning anytime soon. So we, we need an equal sign here. And I'm going to type a win in the second word and the first bubble here we're going to fill it up with a with a variable that is called mario action i think we've already gone ahead and made that for you okay uh now we need her to switch costume back and forth between the different costumes so we're going to go into our looks menu we'll go switch costume to stand then she every two seconds she's going to change her costume so let's go wait two seconds oh i know what happens i stole this pauline code from a different version of mario and it was using a different setup so we have to make this conform to this variable or it's not going to work okay so um i'm going to do this a couple of times more so let's um let's duplicate this top switch costume i'm just going to go right click and duplicate and grab another collection of switch costumes and weights we're going to change the second one to forward hop and the timing, we just need a smaller delay, so I'll go 0 0.4 seconds. And then I'll duplicate again. And I'll change her to help. And that second delay should also be 0 0.4 seconds. And when she wins, or when, we, when Mario wins, we're going to go when I receive win. So let's go to our events. When I receive win forever switch costume to win we're going to go to our looks menu switch costume to win and that is looking beautiful so that's all we need to do for uh, pauline as i mentioned before we'll have to go back and uh, fix something in the collider we'll do that after the break let's just do a little quick test here 
And we're just looking at Pauline here. And yeah, she's moving around the thing health every couple of seconds. Which just adds a little bit to the realism of the game. And I just got schmuck. Okay. Beautiful. All right, we'll take another short break again. And um, then I will get right back to it. Okay, welcome back. So we're gonna we're done programming Pauline. We're just gonna jump back into the Mario Collider. And we're just gonna make a couple of minor changes here to conform with this little bit of glitch in the code. And some people are telling me that the game is still playable even after you've lost your last live life. So we're gonna change that as well. So we're inside the block of code here that says uh, with all the collision detection in it. And at the bottom here, so we're in our Mario Collider, as I said. Um, so if lives are equal to zero, well, let's do a few things. Um, first of all, we're going to um, change that variable. We'll flip that variable over. So we'll go set Mario action. So we haven't used this Mario action anywhere else. It's a different version of the game that uses this. But we might as well play along since Pauline is waiting for that variable. We'll just say... Oh, no, that's not here. We want it if she's touching Pauline. So if touching Pauline, set Mario action to win. And that will just trigger Pauline to change to her little heart. And if lives are equal to zero, let's wait one second here just to make sure everything else has a chance to finish. And then we'll do a stop all at the bottom here. And that will just freeze the game up so that you guys who are saying you can still play will get off my nerves. So let me save my file here now. All right, so we're good with the collider. We're good with the barrels. We're good with, uh, I think, oh, we do have a game lose and a game win condition here, but um, there's not really a whole lot that happens in them. I don't have a game over screen here, and you guys can feel free to create one if you want to. There is a game win sound though, so let's actually play that sound here. And then we'll stop the game after that as well. So um, actually, so we're still in the collider here. Um, I'm going to go back to my sound menu. And here's the wind sound. So let's go and add that sound effect in there. We'll go sound, play sound, wind. So right after we touch Pauline, we're going to play sound until done, because we don't want to end the game until the music's over. And then we're just going to go um, and do another stop all at that point. So now we've frozen the game after um, after we win and after we lose. So there shouldn't be any way to, to change the game to play the game anymore after that. So again, if you want to add a second level, you'll have to go and do a restart level inside this instead of a stop all. And um, you'll have to set everything back to normal. I think just doing a reset game and then switching the background will probably do it. So remember, we're using color detection in these backgrounds. So that means you can redraw this background to look any way you want if you do want to do multiple levels. Again, I'm not going to do it for you guys. But if you want to set this game to a new version with multiple levels, you're probably welcome to give it a try. OK, so all we have left then is our fireball. So let's go. Let me find the code for that. Here it is. My Discord stream has closed again for some reason. Let me get back into it. Just a second. Yes. Could this game be two player or is it mainly for one player? I think you could get away with making it a two player. I I I uh, I'm trying to remember the original Donkey Kong game from home, whether it had, uh, from the arcades. No, it did not have a Luigi character in it. The uh, Luigi came out in a um, in a sequel game called Super Mario Brothers, and that was the first one where Luigi came in. So you could definitely grab a Luigi and have him jump here. You'd have to change a bunch of variables around. Like I couldn't do it off the top, off the cuff here, because um, you'd have to have new variables for a whole bunch of the stuff. And now the collision detection would still work. The um, the game mechanic, the jumping code, and everything would probably work. You. It'd be an interesting little project. You definitely could get it going, and you could have to, uh, one player using WASD and a, and maybe a Q button to jump for something, and the second player using the arrow keys and the space bar. Totally would work. Um, I would challenge someone to do that. If anyone wants to do that and show me how it's done and school me, I would love to do that. Just to, uh, again, another interesting project you guys could work 
on in the Discord group if you're interested as well. So uh, there's a lot more that we can do here. I'm just hoping that you guys will take on the challenge. I've, I've spent on Donkey Kong, so I'm kind of done with it now. And there's not much more I want to do on the actual live stream related to uh, Donkey Kong. Okay, let's get to our yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, uh, so we're happy to uh, work with you guys if you're interested in making it multiplayer, but definitely possible. Nothing wrong with doing this multiplayer. All right, let's get over to our fireball. And um, so we've got quite a bit of code here, and this is going to take us about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we will be done our game. So um, the only thing we need under our green flag here is a hide command, because we're not going to see this guy right away. Let me blow stuff up here for you guys. When green flag clicked, so we'll go to our looks menu and hide us. All right. So um, we've got a bunch of code here that tells him what to do when he gets cloned. Remember that he gets cloned over in the uh, the oil barrel. I don't think I have the code here for the oil barrel. So it should be when, oh, so I think I'm missing a little bit of code from my instructions here. We can probably wing this, but we basically need to tell uh, the uh, uh, the blue barrel. Let me actually go and We've grab. Done it. In We've the done barrel. it. We have done it in the barrel? Because I've got an empty, oh, in the barrel code here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. So it's not in the oil can, not it's in the barrel. Oil. Yeah. So let yeah, that's why I was wondering why the oil barrel was empty. I coded this a week ago and I forgot what I did here. So there's a little bit of code here that set inside the barrel that says if I'm touching oil and if I'm wearing the blue costume, then I spawn into a fireball. Okay, that part's good. Thank you for the update, Chris. That was great. Um, all right. So um, it when it touches, it's going to create a clone of this fireball. So now we need to give him his instructions. Um, to um, to do what to, for how to behave once he gets created. So we'll go when I started the clone under our control blocks here. When I started the clone, first thing we're going to want to do, of course, is show. So let's grab a show command. Now we want to make sure he goes over to the barrel. So I think he probably already is on the barrel. Let's unhide him for a second. No, he's not. So let's just drag him on top of the barrel, just like that. And that will give us our new coordinates. So I'm going to grab a go to from our move blocks. And it tells us that the location is minus 208x minus 152y. Let me save my file again. All right. Now we need a moving. So I've got two different sets of script here that have to do with this movement. The one set of movement is going to make him wander left and right across the screen. The second one is going to make him go up and down and try to keep up with where Mario is now. This is the actual way that it works inside the Donkey Kong code. I believe that the, um, that the fireball can actually climb ladders inside that version of the game, but we're not going to get that complicated. We're just going to have him rise or fall. He's going to try and keep up with the same X coordinate that, or the same Y coordinate, same height that Mario has. So when Mario goes up the level, he will try to go up the level as well. So first we're going to work with the left right movement here. So let's go, um, we're going to grab a forever here, control forever. And I'm going to repeat. So let's grab a repeat in here. Um, we, we want him to move pretty far before he decides to change direction. So I'm going to repeat 30 here. You can tweak that number. So that's just basically how far he'll move before he starts thinking about changing direction. And so, um, oh, yeah, oh, this is the height part. So the left, right part is coming later. Sorry, so we're doing the up, down part first. I got a bit confused here. So we're going to tell him to change his Y by one, which means float up as much as 30 pixels. So we're going to kind of float up and down on the screen, trying to keep up with where Mario is right now. So we're going to change our Y. We're going to go back to our blue motion blocks and go change Y by one. And then we put an if statement in here that basically says if um, if Mario gets too high, then start going higher than that, basically. So let's go to our control blocks. We'll grab an if statement. And we're going to say if y position is greater than 
the Mario Collider's position by us. Um, so if it ends up above Mario, then we're going to tell it to go back down again, basically. So um, we're going to, we need a uh, greater than sign. Let's go to our math operators here. We'll grab greater than, which is the one with a little arrow pointing to the right. So if Y position, let's go grab a Y position block, which is right at the, down at the bottom of our motion blocks. Now we need a block that says Mario's Y. Now we haven't used this one too often, but remember there's a block inside our sensing here called the reporter block. And there's this one here that says backdrop number of stage. I'm gonna pop that into this hole here. Remember, if you cage the wrong thing here at the wrong time, you're not gonna see the right option. So if I click down on the word stage here, is um, it gives me a list of sprites, but it doesn't give me the, um, what I'm looking for is the properties of sprites. What is their position? What is their direction? What is the rest of the stuff? So to see that, you have to change this left menu to change from backdrop to the name of your sprite. So our sprite here is, um, we're looking for is Mario Collider. So where's my collider? Uh, animation frame, barrel color, barrel costume. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Oh, that's not right. Oh, I, I have to say Collider here, right? Yeah, Mario Collider here. Oh, yeah, when I change this to Mario Collider, then that was the trick to it. You have to change the one on the right first, and then change. Now we've got all the properties of a Mario Collider. So I want to say the Y position of Mario Collider. There we go. So if the, if the fireball's Y position is greater than Mario's, if it's higher on the screen, then we're going to send them back down again. So let's go change Y motion, change Y by minus one. Was that Abby who just helped me out there? Thank you very much. All right, uh, that's good for there. So we're outside the if statement here, and let's just have him wait a little bit before he changes again. So there's a wait random time here. Um, that Jeffrey put in. Let's uh, let me just mimic what he did because it seems to wait to work pretty well. So let's go to our events. We'll go wait one second, and he changed that to pick random from 0 0.1 to 1. Now I haven't played around with this much before, but what I expect will happen if you use a number smaller than um, smaller than one here is that it'll actually pull up random numbers based on this this digit here so it'll be 0 0.2 0 0.1 we can test this right now by clicking on it and getting it to generate a random number oh so it's 0 0.7 0 0.3 so it's trying to basically pick a random number up to like a 12 digits or something like that so we don't really care about all the rest of these digits it's really 0 0.3 that's the important part here so it's going to wait basically a third of a second and now it's 0 0.3 again, 0 0.9, so basically a whole second. So any two numbers that will try and find it, but if you try, if you if you do a whole number, like from one to five here, it'll always give you a whole number. But if you do a fraction or a decimal, then it's gonna give you a big fat decimal number that looks a little confusing. You can't use this in a game, but you can definitely use it for a delay because the delay doesn't care about these little tiny numbers. Okay, let's pop that in there. And now that will deal with the up down motion. He's not going to move horizontally. Let's just uh, check. We can still test that out right now, though. So let's go ahead, green flag. So he's going to throw the first barrel down. I have to jump it. And then when it strikes, there we go. And you can see that he's going up. He continues to go up. He's not matching my Y, eh? If Y position is greater than Y position in Mario Collider. So he keeps floating up on the screen, which is not what he's supposed to do. Change Y. If Y position is greater than Mario Collider, this all looks right. It's inside of forever, so it should be checking here. Oh, hold it. So change Y. So these two should kind of be canceling each other out, right? Um, no, because it's repeating inside here. I'm not quite sure how Jeffrey coded this, but um, let's keep going here and see um, and see if there's a bug in here or whether it just needs some more code for it to work properly. Okay, I'm going to take a little break here just for a second, and I'll be right back.
Okay, so we're back here again. Um, I've, I've added a when I, so we're, uh, our, our Mario is working properly now. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. I should probably just start this part over again. We didn't do very much here. So um, let me just. Okay, we're back here and we're ready to go. Let's just go and do a um, start the second part of our code now that we've got the first part working again. So let's go do that right now. So um, we're starting a new block of code that determines its horizontal movement. Let's just go when I started the clone. We'll tell him to set fireball speed to minus one. So let's get our to one set variable and the variable is going to be uh, fireball speed so this is going to make it so that when he goes to minus one he'll flip and move left and when he's at one he'll move to the right it's just a different way to get him to change directions okay now we need a forever now um we're going to get him moving again horizontally. So we want him moving quite a bit before he moves. So we're going to go repeat, but we're going to have him repeat randomly. So let's go grab a repeat until, and we're going to pick um, repeat. Oh, not, not, yeah, sorry, not repeat until repeat. So the difference between repeat, hold it. Oh, there isn't one that's repeat. There is a repeat. Sorry, yeah, sorry. We're using a repeat loop. I got a little befuddled there, guys. Mr. P needs another sip of coffee, apparently. Okay, repeat a random number of times. So let's grab a random number and pop it in there. We're going to go 1 to 100. So a maximum of 100 pixels is what it will move to the right. And we're going to go change X down inside here. So what's he going to repeat? Just moving to the right or moving at his fireball speed, which is the direction really. So we're going to go change X by fireball speed. So let's drop that variable in there. And that way we can use the same block of code to make it move left or move right, which makes it just much more simple, elegant code that we don't, or we don't have to have if statements depending on which way he's moving, right? So a very little clever, clever little trick that I learned from Jeffrey. All right, now we just need some wall collision because he's eventually going to bump into one of our walls on the edge of the screen. So let's grab an if statement here. And we're going to say, so still inside the forever, but underneath the repeat, if touching either of the walls. So we'll grab an or here and we'll say touching in our sensing block. We'll say touching left wall or right wall. Oh, left wall or right wall. There's my left. And, and here's another really clever little trick that Jeffrey did to minimize the amount of code here. So we're going we're gonna to set our fireball speed here to fireball speed times minus one. You might have seen us do this a little bit earlier as well. Let me, I'm going to put this in here and I'll explain how it works. So we need a multiplication sign, which is the top of the operator or the third one down on the operators that's a little star remember and we're going to say fireball speed times minus one so we'll go to our variables we'll grab fireball speed times minus one so you remember what happens when we multiply by negative numbers so if we're if we hit the right wall and we're moving to the right which means our speed is one so that means our fireball speed is one times minus one, which becomes negative one. So that will flip them to the other direction. If we're already moving to the left and we hit the left wall, we, uh, we're moving at a speed of minus one and minus one times minus one is one. So that'll move us back to the positive again. Just a really elegant piece of code here to get the guy changed direction. So uh, really impressive. That will get him bouncing off the walls and uh, we're get, we also wanted to just randomly change directions every once in a while just because he feels like it. So we're going to grab another if statement, and here this is the last bit of code we're going to do. If uh, we're going to have him have a one in ten chance of changing directions every time he moves, and you can change this if you want in the code. So we need an equal sign in here, and we're going to pick a random number. So if a, if a random number from one to ten is equal to one, so we have a one in ten chance of this happening. 
we're going to do the same thing. We're going to flip his direction. So I'm just going to grab this set fireball speed from the block above. And I'm going to pop it in here as well. I made a copy of it. All right, so now our fireball should be moving quite nicely. Let's give it one last test. So let's see how these guys are behaving. Beautiful. So now he's kind of following me. Well, he's kind of wandering aimlessly around the screen on my level, though. And he started moving in the other direction, but now he's floated up a little bit. So he's going to keep getting in my way here, as you can see. Let's wait for the second level to start again. And that guy didn't get killed. You should probably kill him. And yeah, because he just killed me. Okay, it looks like everything's working really nicely here. So I'm just going to add one other little bit of the code here that says under events, when I receive dead, let's kill this guy off too so that they don't stay on the screen and start to stack up with each other. Delete this clone. And that, I believe, is the end. So let me just double check this one more time. We'll just make sure he disappears when I die. And I'm actually going to go up to the, try and get up to the top here and save Pauline, because whatever. Here we go. Oh! All right. That's beautiful. The, um, the fireball did disappear. <laughs> beautifully. Okay, I'm not going to entertain you guys by, watch, by showing you my pathetic Donkey Kong skills. Um, so that was fantastic. I'm sorry it took so long, guys. It's turned out to be a big, complicated game with lots of little room for mistakes, but I think we did it really excellently, so I'm super happy with this, guys. Um, so uh, that's it for today. Remember, tomorrow I will be back with Wii Video Wednesday, and we have a special project. We're going to be doing some TikTok techniques. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do some funky videos, the cool kind of stuff you see, like weird transitions in um, and then they walk on the other side, for example, that kind of cool stuff. So I'll be giving a little tutorial, and Maya will be participating in that as well. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and Thursday, Friday, get ready for a Gala Dive. We're going to be making a Gala the Clone game, and I'm really excited about that. So uh, looking forward to it. Have a great day, guys. It's super hot here in Ottawa, so I'm going to try and um, hide in the air conditioning for a little bit and maybe get outside when it cools off. Uh, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.